So what kind of auction will preserve truthful bidding in multi-item auction? What well, turns out, well, we know GSP doesn't do that, but VCG, Victory Clock Grove's auction mechanism, would induce truthful bidding as a dominant strategy and auction as a game. So in the advanced material, we'll be talking about what is VCG and a proof of VCG inducing truthful bidding as a dominant strategy in the game. But even without going through that, we can quickly talk about the choice between different auction mechanisms in multi-item auctions. So Google picks GSP and other kinds of uh, web 2.0 services, for example, uh, AppNexus. This is a company that runs billions of real-time targeted advertisement type of uh, ad placement online through auctioning, not just uh, on a single web page, but many web pages on the one hand and uh, many advertisers on the other hand. And the matching uh, or the auction that they run is VCG based. So why doesn't Google switch? Well, there are quite a few uh, reasons why. Truthful bidding is indeed desirable, but that's not the only consideration. For example, simplicity of explaining the mechanism is also very important. Google faces a very diverse set of customers, including anybody who want to put in uh, an ad through the AdWords uh, mechanism. So we have to make sure the explanation is very simple. GSP is, VCG is not. That's why it's in the advanced material of this lecture. And another reason is that we have focused exclusively on a single auction. It could be multiple items, but there's only one auction in the whole wide world. But in real life, there are many parallel auctions going on at the same time. One of the homework problems, we'll look at spectrum auctioning. Okay, including those for 3G and 4G wireless networks with package auctions. In online ad auctioning, there are many auctions going on at the same time. Indeed, if I have uh, a burger or advertisement, uh, there are many people searching for hamburgers on Google's website at the same time or about the same time. So with the simultaneous auctions going at the same time, the picture becomes uh, much uh, murkier it's not exactly clear why uh, GSP or VCG is necessarily better than the other. Uh, there's also one more. That is, uh, the consumers may have irrational behavior. So even if they learn that Google say switch from GSP to VCG and they know that VCG induces truthful bidding, they just may decide not to do that. They may keep the same behavior as before to shade their bids as if they were still living in the GSP world. In that case, it will lead to a loss of revenue to Google. And remember, revenue maximization is what the seller cares most about. So that's another reason why Google has the inertia to stay with GSP rather than switch to VCG. So this is about the time to uh, wrap up with a quick summary of what I have seen so far in the lecture. We talk about auction as a way to do resource allocation, discrete resources called items, such as ad spaces. In an open auction, we've got ascending price or descending price. In a sealed envelope auction, like what we talked about most of the time today, is first and second price. We saw that the first price sounds like intuitive, but actually it's not. And in fact, go to or overture tried first price generalized for multi-item auction in the 90s and quickly realized it is quite unstable. Now, the second price may sound like counterintuitive because you're decoupling the allocation decision with the pricing decision, but it turns out it is uh, effectively equivalent to a simpler version of ascending price auction, whereas first price is actually effectively equivalent to descending price open auction. All these are for single item. Once you want to generalize to multi-item auction, then second price, which is by far the most widely used sealed envelope pricing, either can be generalized to GSP that Google uses, which we have covered in quite some detail, or into VCG, which we will be bringing up 
in the advanced material. But there are many more variants of auction we have not covered. For example, we just mentioned simultaneous auctions running in parallel. There's also reverse auction. Instead of one seller and n buyers, we may have one buyer and n sellers. For example, uh, toxic financial uh, assets to be purchased by the U.S. Uh, Treasury Department in the peak of the financial crisis last time. A lot of financial firms want to sell these toxic assets to a single buyer, which is the government, and the auction is reversed. So instead of everybody trying to bid higher, everybody try to sell at a lower price so that the buyer will be interested. There's also multi-winner auctions. Even when there are just there's only one item, we may be able to sell it to many winners if this item can be duplicated many times easily. So physical goods are hard to do that, but certain digital rights, it is certainly possible. And there are many other possible variants of auctions that we will not have time to go through. In summary, we've seen auction as a game. We've seen auction as an allocation mechanism to decide how to allocate items among competing users with possibly a fuzzy notion of the value of that item. We also have seen a very important theme in this course that different mechanisms, in this case auction rules, will induce different bidding behavior. Okay? Again, remember your payoff function is VI minus PI. PI is a function of all the bids B vector, and therefore your payoff is a function of that if you get it. And otherwise, you get nothing. This is your payoff function. As you change the allocation mechanism, you change the branching condition. As you change the pricing mechanism, you change this function that maps the vector of bids into the actual final price. And once you change that, people will say, I will behave differently because the bids that I would like to send, say BI star, is the largest, is the one that will induce the largest utility for me. Now, of course, utility depends not just on my own bids, thus the complication in strategizing in the game, but it partially depends on me. And depending on your allocation and pricing system, we will have a different utility function. And therefore, I will be maximizing different functions to induce the best BI star bidding behavior for me. And everybody thinks the same way. In particular, we saw that if you price based on internalizing the negative externality, or in simpler words, if you price based on how much damage one does, for example, second price in single item auction, that would induce a particularly nice desirable behavior called tooth for bidding. BI star, in that case, equals your true valuation VI.